tell the folks out there a little bit about your professional background, how you made it to from Belarus here to Silicon Valley? Sure. So I'm from Belarus, uh, which you just said. It's a small country in Eastern Europe. I'm a software engineer, former software engineer. Um, I started um, on the path of entrepreneurship about 10 years ago uh, when I moved to America with a backpack and like 400 bucks. Uh, and I've been building sites for, for, for people for a couple of years. Then I turned this like web design business into um, software development mm -hmm. business and then software development business into a product business, software product business. Here we are today. I mean, I've been around to see now the second iteration of a mm -hmm. document management system that you've put together that I know that's very much simplifying it just by calling it mm -hmm. that. I know you're doing a ton of different things. PandaDoc, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, a few years ago, we turned what used to be a, a document, sales proposal, either a piece of paper or a PDF into a web application. And we've seen a lot of opportunity in making documents a lot more functional, a lot more interactive and electronic. So that's what we've done at PandaDoc. Um, and uh, the niches or use cases we're servicing yeah. are uh, sales related documents, sales collateral, um, sales collateral uh, generation of quotes, proposals, contracts, uh, delivery of those documents, signing them electronically, tracking Open all the use, engagement use around it, yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Well, yeah. I am That's intimately familiar with the, the product and I absolutely love it. You being a serial entrepreneur, like you, you got to America, you started mm -hmm. doing websites and then you ended up scaling, understanding the business and, and all that. Um, what is it really like to be an entrepreneur? It's hard. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time that you have to put in. What's nice about it is that you don't like you don't feel like you're um, wasting this time. You feel like you're actually constantly evolving. You're constantly building something. I love to build. When I was a when I was a kid, I loved Legos. That's how it feels. You know, you put the little Legos together, and something comes out of it. That's awesome. That's this is the process I like. So how is it to be an entrepreneur? It's it's hard. It's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of stress too um, because not everything is always like um, great and uh, fun. You got you got it's like a zebra, right? You got uh, white stripes, you got black stripes, but it's a constant evolution of whatever you create. It's uh, it's a building of something, growing of something, which is which is fun. I really like that. How do you take an idea? Mm -hmm. And see, it's it's kind of cheating because you're an engineer. See, I'm non-technical, right? Right. So, um, so I actually can't build anything. But how do you take a concept, mm -hmm. irrespective of whether you're technical or not, and turn it into a business with humans? And I know that's a long, very big sort of answer there. Um, but maybe just some of the steps, like larger steps, that you would take. How how do you build a business like how step do you take by a, step? Well, how do you? Take this is a long conversation. Exactly. Gonna well, in in terms of like there are certain components, mm -hmm. right? There are certain components to a business, right? You might have, you know, engineering team. You might have product team. What are the, some of those other components that are so critical early days that you need to hire it for that to actually build like a real business so this I guess this would be early stage right so in other words you might not want a organizational development team for quite a while mm -hmm. right? until maybe you're a series C company D company public that kind of stuff so what are the core functions of a startup I think is a, a better way to ask the question it would be easier for me to take you from from an idea to uh, let's say a cooperation stage right yeah um, so let's say I start something new. I start something from scratch. Yeah. First thing that gets born is an idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of my ideas about new companies or new businesses are crappy. That's why they have to be validated, yeah. right? So you gotta run it by a bunch of people 
and uh, find out what they think about it. And not just like random people, people that actually know something about the stuff you're gonna like pitch them, right? Yeah. So whatever, let's say you wanna do, um, I don't know, let's say you wanna suit new jeans, and like run it by people that wear jeans. Um, see what they have to say. Don't be afraid to share whatever, uh, whatever you have in your head. Because if someone else, like a lot of people are afraid of sharing their ideas yeah. because they're going to be stolen. But the truth is, no one steals ideas. Ideals are, they are not, you know, there is no value to yeah. ideas. They have no valuation. I love that you just said that. Because mm -hmm. ideas are literally a dime a dozen. Think about how many ideas we think about on a consistent basis, on a daily yeah. basis. And I feel like it's really about execution. It's really about being able to build the right team. It's all these other things. And the idea is kind of I, very important, obviously, you know, but I don't think it's as important as your team and having that, you know, that personality. Let's talk about that a little bit yeah. because a lot of people have been talking about the personalities that you need mm -hmm. to in your team at that like you know small five person you know what I mean like eight person team. What do those folks look like? It's a good question. Um, I can tell you what I like, who I like to work with at at early stage. I like to work with doers. I like to work with entrepreneurial people. I like to work with someone who is fast and uh, someone who is very hard working. Like, I don't know. I like to work with other entrepreneurs yeah. at, at the very like first stages because it's easier to get an entrepreneur to do a gazillion of things that might be different. Yeah. They don't have to dig deep. Like, they don't have to do something extremely well Let's say if you're starting whatever company from scratch, you may not need like a super deep of expertise from every employee that you hire, but you need a lot of expertise to, uh, to be a part of like your early folks uh, yeah. skill set. So, so your first eight people. So vast array of skills. Mm -hmm. Your first eight people, I would say like, very, very uh, versatile, very um, entrepreneurial, very fast. Uh, fast. And I think, you know, like fast, like yeah. learning something really fast is the main skill you need at, a, at, a, at an early stage startup. The ability to learn fast and then execute on this learning is a key. Like that's a, that's a golden knowledge that so I'm always looking for in people. So being maybe just a generalist, someone yeah, who exactly. can do a variety of things. Yep. What do you think is the hardest part of the founder process? Is it building the product? Is it more of the mental stuff because you're trying to develop that courage that's going to be able to allow you to take the risk? Is it sales? Mm. The hardest is when someone quits. That's the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, um, hmm, what's the hardest? Well, founders and CEOs of the company usually uh, are the ones that have the most of the responsibilities. Because ultimately, whatever happens in your company, is that's, that's your fault. Yeah. Whatever bad happens in your company is your fault. Whatever good happens in your company is the team effort. And that's how you got to position it. So, like, kind of like condensating yeah. the, <laughs> uh, accumulating the, um, the, the, the kind of like the, the bad experiences mm -hmm. and, and taking responsibility for all that. It's stressful yeah. and you got to deal with this. And um, how do you, and th I think that's something I wanted to unpack. Okay. How do we, in an effective and healthy way, deal with the stress? So I surf. You surf? Yeah. <laughs> so you do do things to be able to have a balance? Absolutely. Let's, Absolutely. let's unpack that for a second. Okay, let's unpack surfing. Surfing is awesome. I recommend surfing like to every entrepreneur, every CEO that, um, that I'm friends with. Here's why. A, it's a great workout, right? You got to paddle out. Otherwise, 
weights are gonna crush you. So, and you need a good workout. Like, you, I, I work in front of my computer. I get, I mean, yeah. it's, it's not the healthiest it's job yeah, out yeah, there, totally. right? So it's a very good workout first. Um, there, is a, there is a meditation component. When you're, s when you're sitting your board in the water and you wait for a set of waves to come, you relax, you think about things, you meditate, um, you enjoy the sun, there's sun, which doesn't happen that much in San Francisco Bay Area, yeah. unfortunately. Um, I and told you, Tomas, <laughs> about that sun. I mean, the sun is, he shows up the day of, uh, like, the, one of the nicest days I've seen. Uh huh. Anyways. Yeah, so, and then when the set comes, you paddle out, like, you've you got to work really hard. And you always gamble. Every entrepreneur is a little bit of a gambler, right? Mm. We, we take risks, yeah. we make bets. And you, you gotta make a bet on a certain wave. Because if you're gonna try to catch whatever wave, um, and it's, it's not a good wave, then so you know, kind of like know? miss it. How do you know what wave? Well, you gotta, you gotta see the right one, right? So and it's kind of similar to opportunities, yeah, right? Exactly. You, gotta, you gotta ride the right wave. Yeah. Otherwise, um, uh, otherwise, you're not gonna have fun. And if the wave is good, yeah, then you know you're gonna have a lot of fun. Um, you gotta go fast. You're gonna go fast. Uh, if it's if it's not very good, you might get crashed, right? Like it's gonna yeah. break earlier, um, or or whatever. It's yeah. just a crappy wave. I hear so you. I find a lot of like a lot of similarities, mm -hmm. and uh, I think uh, I think workout and meditation component um, really help me. Um, to, to, to wind down stress. And I do a bunch of other things, like, I don't know, uh, hanging out with my kids, going to a zoo. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to completely relax with, yeah. with kids. Because you got to watch. You yeah, gotta you got to watch them. them. You got to feed uh, them. You gotta, well, you know, They're feeding now. is not a thing. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not the thing that you got to, you got to really, like, make sure is, you got to watch the, so that they don't run out and, yeah. like, you know, jump in a cage with a gorilla or yeah something. i know like, jeez um so what else do i do um i started to wakeboard mm -hmm. um i try to run every morning mm -hmm. because if i run for like 20 minutes um for the rest of the day i have enough energy to mm -hmm. to be pumped up and to like spread this energy around and yeah. you know smile all the time yeah. i get the dopamine rush the probably dopamine after rush, yeah after i uh finish my uh finish my run or so during question do you have to have in order to live a high performance life mm -hmm. in business it sounds to me that you really have to have kind of a high performance life in your personal life in terms of being able to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and preparing yourself um, both mentally and physically for the type of stress that taking these risks really provide right like you know i'm the shittiest psychologist or neuroscientist you probably <laughs> gonna talk to so i don't know yeah it works for me yeah like that's that's all i can tell yeah what would you say is silicon valley culture like is does it exist does it exist you know there's this whole like tv shows yeah. and all this stuff yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah does it exist and if so what is it silicon valley culture well, yeah, there are a lot of differences uh, between the way people uh, work, act, uh, relate to each other in Silicon Valley and let's say Belarus. That I can speak off or yeah. about. Well, what the are right some one? of the differences <laughs> when you when you speak to entrepreneurs, let's say in Belarus, mm -hmm. and then you sit down and you and you're in a meeting in New York or Austin or some of the other like tech towns. What's the distinction? Like, what are some of the differences you found versus, let's say, those places versus like, uh, or or San Francisco versus those places where yeah. it's so very specific, unique, and you're like, you know what? Everyone in the valley seems to have this characteristic. Mm. So I think people in the valley are a little more laid back, uh, comparing to Belarus or the East Coast, and you know, it's it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. I don't really know, like. At the end of the day, which which culture is right? Yeah, um, they are definitely less aggressive, uh, but again, not everyone. Yeah. It really depends. Um, 
failure failure is not that big of a deal in Silicon Valley comparing yeah. to everywhere else which again it's a good thing and it's a bad thing there are a lot of entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley that like start companies every freaking month and sometimes I'm like just kind of like stick to something and finish it like yeah. you know like put some efforts and uh, try to see this through before yeah. you know quitting yeah. um, but at the same time contrary I have folks back back in Belarus that do things for like years, years right yeah. and it's like dude this is like you know you've done it for five years it's not yeah. working out maybe you should try to do something else yeah um, so I don't really know like what what's the right way to do things yeah. the devil is in details right totally um, but yeah there's some differences if you're an early stage founder and you're let's say you have an MVP product where maybe it's a, a feature to your small team you're like three you know maybe it's like two founders and an outsourced engineer or something mm -hmm. What are some of the tips that you would give them uh, around, um, you know, just getting your first couple customers? Well, every CEO should be a salesman, and uh, every CEO has to has to always sell. And, I, and like, I'm not talking about knocking on someone's doors and trying yeah. to sell your product, but you, you always sell. You sell your vision. You sell to prospective employees. You sell to existing employees. You sell to investors if you need investors. Yeah. You sell to clients at the end of the day, partners, like you always sell. Even if you run a consumer business, at some point you're gonna be selling something to someone. So get out and sell, that's, like, yeah. <laughs> that's my advice. Awesome, well thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time. We didn't wanna take up too much of your time, but if folks want to uh, get in contact with you, follow you on social media, what's your, uh, your Twitter handle? It's Mikita Mikado. It's kind of like potato, potato. 